ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, doctors. Today, we're going to be talking about some very important things regarding where to put a practice and how to select locations that are going to work well for you. There are a couple of tells. Now, as you've ever played cards with someone, you can tell who's bluffing, who's not, who's got a great hand who do, and who doesn't by their tells. There's some tells that we're going to talk about that I think you need to hear about to determine whether or not the place you're going to consider going is going to be good or bad, and what the long-term prognosis for the site is going to be in terms of its value. Now, remember, we don't want to just consider where you're going to go and sacrifice and set all these things up in, in a particular location and assume that everything's going to work out perfectly, because there are going to be bumps in the road. There are going to be things that will raise or lower the value of your practice, and those are things which are going to determine how good or bad the site is. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. So if you're trying to find a state or even a local area as defined by a political boundary, you have to take into account one party rule. In other words, there are dangers of fudging. You're going to, fudging. We have noticed that when there is no one else that is keeping an eye on how honest people are and how public policies are decided, they tend to fudge because they think they can get away with it. Now, I'm not saying that all politicians are dishonest. All right, most may be a little bit suspect, but the point is there are reasons why we want to make sure that there's someone to keep an eye on who the politicians are. Now, by the way, it can be another political party or it can be the media. But when you have a media that is wholly all in, in the way that things are determined, or you have no effective opposition in a political party, you've got problems. And those are places that you do not want to practice. And let me get right to and explain why. Doctor demographics is all about where to move, start a practice, a business, how do you promote your efforts, and to get the most out of the location. We are keeping ahead of the trends. Now, remember, the trends are what count. It isn't where we are in a snapshot. It's a moving picture to know what direction that your practice area is heading. So just keep that in mind. Now, look, I'm going to be honest. There are some people who will disagree with what I'm going to tell you. They will say, no, no, you definitely trust our party, our group, our coalition, whatever. And uh, the problem is that's not wise. The safest place to practice in the U.S. are those places that have political opposition. That is going to keep the shenanigans from happening. Now, you may say, well, wait a second. I happen to be in healthcare. What shenanigans are going to happen? Oh, trust me. There are a lot of shenanigans that go on, and the value of a business or a practice, real estate, housing market, population trends are going to often be tied to that political opposition being active. Now, when the governor and the entire legislature are of one party and have large majorities, practices always suffer. Now, you may think, well, my political party was never going to do anything wrong. <laughs> yeah, it, it could. So you might want to take a couple of notes here. California happens to be the poster child of one party rule. Now, it isn't just a matter of Los Angeles or, or Sacramento, where the state legislature and the governor are. It also has to do with the will of major city bosses. Now, in Los Angeles, even in San Diego, definitely San Francisco, there is going to be a significant problem regarding where people are located. So California definitely has this. So what are the other places that is happening? Well, if you look at Washington State, and I'm talking particularly about those who are on the west coast of Washington State, Illinois, New York, Connecticut, New Mexico, and Colorado are in serious danger when it comes to where the political will is not balanced by an opposition. And it's having an effect upon where people practice. Now, you may say, well, how much do they really regulate doctors and healthcare practices? Well, directly, they don't 
pass a lot of laws that that are, are in that line, but they do when it comes to zoning. So if all of a sudden the price of having a commercial property, being able to place a, a new business, the regulations associated with it, waste management, energy, these are the things that are talked about when we're talking about majorities in a one-party rule that are determining what is happening for the states. Now, those that are going to be divided, as a general rule, are going to have a better and easier time. I know that that doesn't always happen, and it's not always your choice, but it is a thing to keep in mind. And how is it manifested? Well, the decreased population and is usually a thing that happens first and foremost. People will leave whenever there is one party rule because of inherent corruption or they will simply say, these people who are in power politically and regulatorily, that we don't need those other people. Well, they kind of do. But they often may think, well, these aren't our voters, so to heck with them. And this is an example of what happened in California. So the inner, the, the valley, let, let's call it the Central Valley in California, has a large number of conservative people. But the people who are on the coast outnumber them so much and have so much more power in the state legislature that they choose not to listen to those people in the Central Valley, meaning specifically farmers. We don't need you. We don't care about you. You can just drop dead. Now, if you look at New York State, the upstate, and I'm talking about Albany, Yonkers, heck, you know, even, they're kind of enslaved to the big city populations in the major metropolitan areas. The same thing is true in Illinois. If you look at Chicagoland, it is a very different state than the rest of the state of Illinois. They keep electing people that are not serving their best interests. And that's specifically what I'm talking about. They will almost always have higher taxes. Those states that have the highest tax rates in the United States are those that have a single party rule because they somehow think they can go ahead and raise taxes, pay their constituents who are their supporters, and they're good. That doesn't work so well. It's not a good idea. So the, the higher tax issue is another tell. Increased regulation almost always follows when there is a governor and legislature that are of one party. That is kind of an odd thing, because as we've noted demographically, when there is increased regulation, people leave. And as they leave, this is a thing which is going to really hurt the population overall. The population doesn't increase. And remember, doctors, if you want to be in a place where a practice is healthiest, there should be natural growth. Now, that natural growth doesn't have to be a higher birth rate. It's nice that if it does, but immigration, either international immigration, people from other countries or from other states coming into the the state helps your practice to grow and increases the amount of production and collections you have. That's why you need to know it. There is another phenomenon which is tied to higher taxes in increased regulations, which is the higher cost of living. Now, when somebody says to me, Scott, can you do an examination and tell me, is this a place that is going to have a desirable nature? We always look to the higher cost of living. And that usually translates into the cost of housing. Yes, high taxes are bad, but it is when people cannot afford housing. And I mean, usually that's single family dwellings, but also can translate into apartments the cost of living goes up and people don't want to live there. And therefore, your practices are not going to do as well. So related to this, there is an inflated home pricing policy that gets in when the legislature and the governor are of one party. When they are not, someone will say, you know, we ought to keep the price of housing low. But there is an incentive when there's a one-party rule that will make people say, yeah, I absolutely want to have an inflated home price. That's what I want. That's not always what you really want. Now, I have heard this statement very often when I've done research on locations, and it is housing is a human right. Is housing a human right, really? 
is it a thing that is really transcends market needs? Because that's really what you're saying. If housing is a human right, and that means affordable housing, it really kind of means I don't care what the market will bear. There are some times, however, that you don't want the market to be super responsive to statements like housing is a human right. But it comes down to this other little weird fact. People are not living their values. So if you go to a place where the governor and the legislature are of the same political party and have large majorities, it also means that affordable housing will of necessity go down. They are not building affordable housing because it is so much more profitable for the politicos to raise the price of housing, to increase taxes on property, and to, to kind of screw over the population so that they, in the government, can collect more taxes, more revenues, to pay off their constituents and those people who like them. The affordable housing myth in Palo Alto is kind of making big news. In Palo Alto, it is a remarkably wealthy town. And there recently, they set up a little sector of the town in Palo Alto where we need to build affordable housing. All right, fine. We love it. We thought that was a really good idea. All those millionaires having people who are just thousandaires might be a good idea, right? Well, it turns out they figured out ways around it. They increased the, the value and the, the, reduced the number of affordable housing units there were in Palo Alto. The problem is they can't afford to hire school teachers and policemen to live in Palo Alto because the cost of housing is so high. In other words, they talk a good game, but they don't follow a good game. And this is, again, where the, the, the governor and the legislatures are of one party. Now, there is a thing that I want to go over just briefly with public choice theory. You have to, and by the way, this is a, a, a theory by James Buchanan. If you ever want to Google it, it's a fascinating thing. The public choice theory suggests that there are things that people will vote on that is in their best interest. You always assume that everybody is doing what is in their best interest. What is the smart way to do it, to, to go? I got that. But Public choice theory is violated very often when there are constituent populations that are not representative of the demographic uh, of the general population. Majority doesn't rule when it comes to public choice theory. And therefore, you find weird permutations in which things are distended and distorted within a population area. If you were to go to a place like Martha's Vineyard, in Massachusetts, you may say, oh, well, everybody in Martha's Vineyard tend to be of the same demographic character. The truth is they're the same demographic character because the public choice theory was denied. They simply said, we're going to so increase how much it costs to live here, we're going to kick out all the poor people and the people who don't fit our particular political and socioeconomic priorities. That's where you get in danger when you don't have a population that is opposed to you. Now, I want to read something that Adam Smith said in The Wealth of Nations. And Adam Smith, as you know, was a smart guy and a Scotsman. He said, it is not for the benefits, pardon me, of the benevolence of the butcher, the brewer, or the baker that we expect our dinner, but from the regard of their own interest. We address ourselves not to their humanity, but to their self-love and never talk of them of our necessities, but of their advantages. To break that down, what they're saying the butcher, the brewer, and the baker charge what they do and provide a level of service that we think is really good because it's in their best interest, not in the best interest of the general public. That is ultimately why you need a population that is not made up of a narrow, homogeneous population. You want to find variety. You want to find different classes of people living somewhere close together. That variety is what makes things desirable politically and in a regulatory manner. You get it? Now, ultimately, you have the law versus self-interest. When people do things based upon the law, they often will find that the law was passed by people who are of the political class that dominates 
self-interest is what is the long-term strategy of why you keep fees at a reasonable rate, why you make the hours of operation reasonable, why you will actually offer ways for people who don't have as much money as others to get their care. They do this because operating in their self-interest, as I hope you do, you'll notice that your population will increase, your production and your collections will increase. But once something is done based upon a law, which is an arbitrary construct in socioeconomics, you're going to be in trouble. That's what I'm getting at. One party rule states are doing worse by far in providing affordable housing. Now, the reason I started this little episode, this topic, is because I was looking at the figures for affordable housing and wondering are doctors inclined to move to a place where affordable housing is on the increase or staying the same or going down? Now, when there is affordable housing, and I don't mean cheap housing, I mean housing that literally middle class people can afford, they in healthcare almost always do better. When they don't have that, they do worse. And that's why finding a place that has lots of affordable housing is best. And why you will note that one party ruled states are the ones that are doing worst in that. Do you see how the, the, those factors tie together? Now you wanna find places where there are lower taxes. You may say, why? I mean, after all, isn't it a good thing to have high taxes? We can afford better schools and get the homeless off the streets and well, whatever other public good you might think. But the truth is lower taxes don't necessarily mean that automatically good things are going to happen, but they tend to be correlated. And whenever you have that, there's an affordable cost of living. Affordable cost of living means doctors can have practices where they're making more money in production and collections than those places that do not. And there is greater gr job growth. Now, there's a weird thing going on. We've had a lot of people resign from their work. And everybody's going, what, what, why is that? Why would they do a thing like that? It is because it does not make sense for those people to continue on working in the same circumstances that they're under. So people have quit. Job growth is actually going on in the fact that, you know, they're, they're jobs. But the problem is there are not as many people to fulfill them. That translates into the labor participation rate goes down. We need to have lower taxes, affordable cost of living, and job growth for practices to do well. All of those have to be in place. You don't want a practice that is restricted to those places where everybody is a millionaire because there are not as many people there. There cannot be younger families that move in because they're priced out of the market, and there will be no more growth in employment. Now, I came up with this concept, and, and if you want to know what services we offer, there are several, but the telephone consultation might be one you'd want to do where you get on the phone with us and you say, here are the parameters. I've got an ex-wife living here and my kids are there, or I've got a house here, or my significant other has an ill parent that we have to take care of, whatever. The thing to do isn't to say, tell me every place in the United States that would have what I need but it's to localize those locations that are going to have that would help you in your particular situation. That's why spending time with me on the telephone or on the computer just kind of makes sense. That is what we have the telephone consultation for. Now we can talk about your ideal sites while everyone is distracted. No, I'm just saying a lot of people right now are thinking, I can't move, I can't grow, I can't go anywhere, I'm stuck. A telephone consultation is an inexpensive way to talk about the places that are going to work for you. And that's all we care about, not the best place all over the country, but the pl best place for you. Data is easy. I want you to remember that. It's not a hard thing for us to tell you how many people there are. But what's hard is the analysis. And the analysis is going to be what you need and what you want. And that's not going to be the same answer for everybody. So you don't just want to say, where are the states that have the lowest competition ratios? Where are the places that are growing best? And that's all I care about. No, you need to know more than that. 
If you would like more information, visit us at Dr. Demographics. I'm Scott McDonald. Write to me at info at drdemographics.com or call me at 833-424-6222. And we're anxious to help you find the perfect place to put a practice. Thanks so much.